There, now we have sound. I think I forgot to turn on the microphone. Let's try that. Do I have sound now? That's why I don't get going until I make sure. So are we good? Let me make sure that stream is healthy. Data is looking good. 1080p is looking well. I am on my new dedicated streaming PC that I built in the last live stream, and it seems to be doing a phenomenal job of keeping up and not crashing. So no closed captioning. Do I have the ability to turn on live closed, closed captioning? Is that a thing? Let's see. Uh, where's the setting for that? Stream settings. Uh, I don't even see how I turn that on. Plus, I don't know what it would do. Let's see. Do they have that? Let's see. Enter add. Create highlight. Uh, well, I'd love to turn on live closed captioning. I just don't see the setting for it. Let's press that button. Let's see what that one does. Live chat. Modernization. I do not see how to turn on live closed captioning. So I'm going to have to look that up for my... Oh, there it is. Nope. That's not how you turn it on. That's just how I enable that I am doing it. So I don't see any live closed captioning. I don't see that. So I'll look into it, though, particularly if you people are listening and you are in some way hard of hearing or maybe you're using some sort of translation software or uh, you're just somewhere where you can't listen to audio. So I apologize. If, I don't know if that's anything I've ever turned on before. So anyway, here we go. We've got about 37, 38 people watching. We got New Zealand in the house. We have, let's see who else is here. Let me see. We've got our usual uh, group of fine people. We've got DB3D, Dan in the house. We've got 3D printing and painting, Perfect 10. Who do I see here? Lucas. Lucas I just saw on my Patreon stream, which I did right before this. So uh, if you'd like some more one-on-one -on -one camera time with me, join Patreon, which you'll find the link in the description for Patreon. Uh, and I do that once a month, or at least I try to. we got Jeff was here earlier, as well as Johnny. Uh, Michael was here really early, as well as Pygar2. So we've got Corey and Scott and Mark. Anyway, I think that's everyone. Uh, everyone, yes, uh, as Dan is pointing out, please smash the like button. Uh, let me know that you like the stream, that you're enjoying the content I'm providing, and by hitting the like button, you're letting YouTube know that you find it worth the time to actually hit the like button, and maybe they'll share this stream with other people. Uh, and we will keep this going. Boost the sound, please. Let me see what my levels look like. I can do that. I made sure I was ready to. Again, this is a new setup, so there may be a little bit of sound tweaking I need to do. Um, let's see. Where is my sound? Boost it. Okay. How's that? That should be boosted. Any more than that, I'm going to be hearing red if I get too loud. So we got Florida. Florida's near by. Uh, I've been told by Pygar to open the X from the bottom. Okay, Mark said perfect on the sound, so we'll try that. Let me know if the sound clips because I am moving my head around and that's going to change the sound a little bit because I keep it on the side here. So let me know if there's any problems with the sound and I will keep going with the chat, but I don't want to waste too much more time than this. Uh, let me give the usual shout outs, the usual information you need to know. So, first of all, where did these printers come from that I'll be taking a look at today? I bought them, and I bought them thanks to the support of my Patreons, and thanks to the support of the people that buy through my affiliate links. These all help the channel, so I really appreciate that, uh, because this allows me to go out and buy printers that I normally wouldn't get a chance to, um, to review because I don't have relationships with those companies yet. So again, all products on today's uh, stream I have purchased myself with the funds from the channel so thank you very much for your support uh, anyone that is a member of my patreon or has even bought through any of my affiliate links so I have in the uh, description below you will find non affiliate links that will take you over to Inacubix website which is where I bought the printers from I won't get any cut from those and that's just fine if that's where you choose to buy from uh, I also have the Amazon affiliate links which I do receive a portion of that 
uh, if you choose to buy through those links. If you like my cool new t-shirt, which this is the first time of uh, me ordering and trying on the red shirt, which I absolutely love this color. Uh, but if you want one of these t-shirts, again, the link is in the description for one of my cool t-shirts. Um, anyway, uh, thank you, Scott. I really appreciate that. Thank you for letting me know. That's terrific. Um, and again, I don't think there's anything else for this. Again, you can find all the links. If you have any questions while I'm doing this, please let me know, and I'll be happy to answer. And we're going to get started. And Pygar said to open from the bottom and lift up, and it will be a lot easier. Uh, the Wallaby, appreciate that. You're picking up one of my red t-shirts. I love this color. I like this dark red. I think there's also a light red up there. And I got a whole bunch of colors. It comes in any size that Amazon supports. This is a print-on-demand shirt, but I chose Amazon specifically. Number one, because anyone can order, hopefully, from Amazon without any problems. Uh, and I like their quality. Their quality was better than one of the other companies I tried. So let's do that. I'm going to turn this on its side. And this, and this is a heavy printer, by the way. So spared no expense here on the weight of the printer. And I should have my pocket knife in my pocket. Thank you, Corey. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, as one of my other Patreon supporters pointed out, there is another company, individual, somebody, uh, selling a t-shirt with a very similar slogan to this uh, on Amazon. It's not the same shirt. It's not from me. If it doesn't have the Curzy Fabrications logo on it, you didn't buy the right shirt. Uh, so thanks for looking if you did buy one of those shirts, but uh, it's not from me. I won't be getting anything from that. So we're going to open the bottom, as Pygar suggested, and put that back in my little pocket. And he's saying that this will all fall out nicely if I do it this way, so I'm going to take him up on it. So these are nice recyclable pieces here, which I'm going to go ahead and pull these out, otherwise they're just going to fall. So I'm going to save those for recycling later. And uh, hopefully everyone has their beverage. I'm going to start with this beverage. I'll probably switch over to something else later. So what we got. Um, thank you, Michael, for dropping by. Even if you can't stay, I really appreciate you coming by. We got 50 viewers right now, just about 50 with 18 likes. Please take the time, hit the like button. Smash that like button if you prefer that nomenclature. And uh, let's get this on here. I'm going to... That was a plastic piece, don't worry. They have little plastic corners. I have to admit, so far it looks like it's very well packaged. Um, I guess I should talk about the printer. Um, <laughs> this is the, I'm just jumping into this because I don't want to waste people's time, but this is the uh, AnyCubic Photon Mono X. I bought it when they released their first thousand or so uh, on their website. So I got the reduced price, I think mine was 500 and something for this printer. It is a large printer. Uh, its build volume is 192 by 120 by 245. Uh, it does have the um, mono display on it, so a longer life out of your display on here, as well as faster printing. So, hey, Fotis, thanks for dropping by, man. Appreciate it. Good to see you in the chat. Um, so that's what we're looking at here. Uh, it's a much larger format printer than like the Photon regular that I'm going to be opening as well. Uh, but I wanted to get this one going first so that hopefully we could get a print off of it. At least that's my goal. And I'm still dropping pieces, which is fine. There's just packing. Uh, so far, I'm loving the packing. They have the corners protected with these nice plastic pieces here, which are terrific. Uh, they've got cardboard stiffeners on all the sides. So it looks really well packaged. And I'm hearing things falling apart. But, looky there, we've got uh, Pygar had that one nailed. He was absolutely correct that that is how you open that printer. Again, uh, plastic corner pieces that are really nice because it protects it when it gets dropped inevitably by whatever shipping service that they use. So that doesn't, as long as one of these doesn't fall in my drink, I'll be pretty happy. So I'm saving the cardboard pieces so that they can be recycled. Yep, I'm going to throw those in the box while I'm off camera here. 
Oh, and that's probably too loud. Sorry about that. And save the plastic pieces. Let's see what we got. Um, let's see if it's worth buying. I hope it's worth buying because, like I said, I spent uh, spent my own money on this one, or you know, the channel money on this one because I really wanted a large format machine. And this one looked like a great one. I was really happy with the way AnyCubic did their pre-orders. They had lots of units available from the beginning. I had no problem getting into my pre-order. If any of you had problems getting in your pre-order, uh, let me know because I thought that their pre-order process uh, worked better than the other company whose large printer I tried to buy and they wouldn't let me because they ran out. So I'm much happier with AnyCubic right now because um, anyway, just I was happy that I could get this one. Uh, let's see. Well, it's 10,000 to ship to New Zealand from any 10,000 what? I would think that's not 10,000 US dollars. Although I don't know if New Zealand dollars are any better, to be honest. What we got here. So, again, uh, really good high density foam here. Everything looks really well, uh, well packaged. I expected the instructions and everything to be on top, but they're not. Um,. Let's see what we got. Okay, so this comes off separately. And again, really nice packaging. Um, and before anyone asks, I wanted to watch, I actually did start watching Joel stream the other day when he opened his, but I was with family that night and did not have time to watch the whole stream. So I don't know how Joel's unpacking went. You can let me know if you were watching Joel's stream because he unboxed his already. So keep in mind, this is not a review unit. This is not anything special. I paid for this unit. Um, I should be getting the same experience that any of you would get if you bought one of these. Uh, their shipping was excellent. It came through FedEx. And here is the case. Very well built. Nice, thick, sturdy. It's a big, big uh, cover, as you can see. Um, Let's see. Attention, this sticker is for top cover detection. Do not remove. <laughs> so they have a mandatory sticker on here. Right here, that they specifically say don't take off this sticker. So I'm guessing they have some sort of uh, light sensor that when this covers up, it knows that the, uh, the cover is actually on the printer. Other than that, there is a film all over the lid, uh, on the outside of the lid. And I'm not going to remove that right now because... As satisfying as that would be, it would be probably a little time consuming. Let's put that over here. What I got? Um, so Dan said he watched Joel's stream and it went really well. Um, let's see. So I have this paper can be used for leveling and also in Chinese. I assume Chinese. So there we go. So I'm going to keep this. Uh, as you may have seen, I pulled out the instructions, and it does have nice instructions in here, which I will be following. If you've watched my streams before, you know I try to follow the directions. Um, I'm hoping that <coughs> I'm hoping that I actually have Chi2 box settings in here. So otherwise, I'm a little concerned. Like, will I have the right settings, or will I be printing slowly for no reason? I did go to their website to see if they had settings, or maybe they have something I can import. Let me see. I'm relatively new to Chi2 Box. I've actually tried out uh, one of Crowdy's printers that I still haven't released the review on because of issues, uh, but I have been playing with Chi2 Box a little bit. Let's see. What is in here? So they have, hmm, I'm not gonna be able to show you what this looks like, but it looks like it's well packaged. So let's go ahead and pull these out. I have an American, America, I have an American three prong uh, plug. And I get that out. I have the AC adapter. We got in the stream. How many people are watching us today? Sticking at that 50 mark for right now. Yeah, I've been trying to get into resin printers. After I released that one video on resin printing and here are all the parts I would buy and here's all the stuff I would buy, I went straight into that Creality printer. 
that was supposed to be a review. So if you remember, there was kind of a long lull where I didn't have any reviews. And part of that was reviews that are half filmed or three quarters of the way filmed. And then I had problems. And so the review never came out. I could have released a partial review, but I really didn't want to. And so I'm still working on that Creality review. Let's see what I've got here. It comes with safety precautions. I have a mask and I have resin filters. Should probably turn on, let's go with my close up in the corner here. You're not gonna see much, but that's what's in that package. There we go, now you can see what I'm opening. So that's the resin filters for when you put it back in the container and a mask. What else do I have? I have a large scraper, which is a good idea given the size of this printer. I'm gonna take off that protective plastic while I'm doing it. Yeah, I know, I know they slowed down for a bit and it was because I was working on three long reviews at once. Uh, I kind of got bogged down. I don't really run on the schedule that a lot of other YouTubers do where I have to put something out every week. If something doesn't get out in a week, I don't just rush it out. Um, but that's not saying that they do necessarily, but I take the time if it takes it. And so that's why you got the, um, the dual extruder video, which took a while to produce because that was a lot of work. Um, so here is the build plate. Very nice, clean. I will probably be ordering a wham, bam, wham, bam, right? Wham, bam mat for this one, because this is a big one. I really don't want to be scraping prints off of this one for very long, but it's very nice. Uh, it is also slanted as you can see so that the resin can run off. Uh, that's very nice. Uh, other than that, all metal. Very nice, all aluminum piece right there. Hello, I, hmm, I would love to pronounce your name. You're gonna have to phonetically type that for me, but hello, Norway, good to see you. Thank you very much for joining us. Wham Bam Rocks, love mine. Yeah, I keep hearing good things. Here is the reservoir. So if you're wondering the build volume, here's what we're looking at. Nice big build volume on this one. Um, I don't even know where I'm going to start with this because this opens up whole new possibilities for things I'm going to print. Um, but I still, I think, primarily going to be doing FDM until I really have bed sizes like you see back here. Uh, okay, so that's that. I'm going to leave that in the package for now because I don't want to damage anything. What else I got in here? So a package of... See if you can get that down here. Don't knock that off. So as you can see, I have the plastic scraper here. I have an antenna because this one does have Wi-Fi. And I've got gloves and a whole bunch of other parts here. We'll break into that, I'm sure, in just a minute. And that may be everything. Looks like there's something that could go in here that is not in here. So that's for future expansion. Now this should come off. There we go. Okay, this feels light enough that it's probably empty. So let me turn this around. Make sure I'm not going to tip anything over. There we go. Pull this off. Now you can get a good look at the printer itself. Uh, let's see. So this is a beast of a... Z, Z gantry. I'm really, really impressed here. Uh, they have dual rods, excuse me, dual rails on here. Nice linear rails. What I look for, one of the first things I look for, particularly with some of the experiences I've had with linear rails, is is there any slop? Is this going to move around to any while it's printing? And there is no slop on here whatsoever. I can actually look into the rails here and here and see no light whatsoever. It is very, very clean. It is not wiggling, it is not moving. I get just an ever so, if I really put some force into it, I can get a little bit of slop in this direction, but absolutely zero in the left and right and front and back. So uh, I really feel good about this one. I think it's gonna uh, produce some good prints. Now let's get this out of here. There we go. 
Okay. Got a stack of packaging material. Um, very impressed with the build quality. So this is heavy. It's a nice heavy printer, which is that's one of the things I look for. I want a, I want a good build quality. Um, as you can see in the down shot there, it's nice and sealed around the display. Uh, everything is metal that I'm looking at. Every panel is metal. Uh, again, all of this is metal. I need to keep my hands off the rails. And so you get the little satisfying peel off of this. Oh, okay, that's not everything. And a satisfying peel off the display. Did I get that? Oh, yeah. That's what everyone wanted to see. That's what everyone came for. Um, very nice. So, that looks really good. Now you can see it from both the close up and the far away. Um, I'm going to get rid of my nameplate for now so that you guys can see a little bit better. There we go. We'll turn that off. Um, let's see. So, what's next? Like I said, I like to follow the directions. So, we're going to start with that. I'm not going to need those for now. Um, let's see. Unpack and remove all the accessories. Then plug in the power and turn on the power switch. All right. So, let's do that first then. So, I have a new power strip I've installed down at the bottom of my bench here finally. So, I can install more printers at one time and not have to run cables as far. One of the other things I'm working on the channel is expanding the operation. I'm still uh, expanding the garage space here to handle more printing at once. So the barrel jack for this converter is on the side here. That does reach the floor. So if you want to see the side that I'm working on, here's the side. You'll see I've got the where the barrel jack goes. The USB connection is right here. And my on-off switch is right here. There we go. Okay. And I need the adapter for my country. You don't like that they used a plastic tape on the LCD screen. Um, let's see. You're talking about the one that goes around the edge. What would you have preferred, a, like a aluminum tape of some sort, something like that? Okay. Well, you could replace it. I think the plastic, as long as it's rated for temperature, it'll be fine. You know, if it starts peeling off for people, that'll be a real problem. But I have to, I have to say, I don't think any Cubics knew at this. They shouldn't have installed anything that people are going to have problems with. Right, I am plugged in. Let's cut it on. Can you see the display? There we go. Let me try to get you a better shot of that display. This means I'm going to have to come down a little bit. That should be good enough. I can zoom in as I'm playing with it a little bit. go um no what do they say say i need to go to let me come around you're going to lose me here for a minute but let's go ahead and i'll switch over to just the close-up so you can see what's going on it's a bit of a glare sorry about that what is the glare from uh, i don't even know oh the glare is just from the table oh well okay what do we got here? So, like I said, let's do what they say. We're going to go to Tools. Very responsive touchscreen. I like. We go to Move Z. Yeah, really responsive. I'm going to go to 10. And then, if I move up a little bit, you'll see what it's going to do. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to move up. Very, very silent. It's not making any sounds. It's not squeaking. Uh, it moved up 10. 
Okay, as usual, we are now going to go back out and we have our build plate and we need the hex key that goes with this. So in the pack, we have a QC card. We have a USB stick that also has our screws that are going to attach our reservoir to the base. We have a service card, which has some QR codes on the back. We have our gloves, which is wonderful, safety first. Our plastic scraper. And what else we got here? Screws, we have extra screws, because I assume we don't need any of these screws yet, but it's got extra screw packs, which I am not going to turn down extra parts. The rest of the stuff in here are three hex keys. Three hex keys and our little Wi-Fi adapter um, antenna. Okay, so we need to figure out which one. We need to loosen up these four on the side. So that's our large one here. I'm just going to loosen those up. Loose. 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 And hello, Chris Travis. Good to see you. If you're hearing background noise, that's my large fans that are on my Ender 5 Plus, but I usually block those out pretty good. Okay. And nice and loose now. We are going to then install it and secure it. Place the leveling paper on the screen and click the home button. Um, and we're gonna press gently and tighten the screws back. This is usual bed leveling stuff. Ahead. You know what I'm going to do? This is not loose. So let's go and loosen that up. Switch back to there. Okay, we're going to go. I'm going to go and put the paper on here because I don't want to damage the bed. So I'm going to put the paper on here. I think the paper's too thick, personally. There's actually already a piece of plastic on here I have to remove. And the plastic, I would think that the plastic is already actually very similar to the same thickness as the plastic that is on your uh, reservoir. But I'm going to follow their directions the first time at least and do it that way. And this will protect the screen at least initially. I'll put that on there, push in with both fingers, make sure it's good and tight. And then I can tighten my screen down. Okay, tightened good. We're gonna go around to the front again and I'm gonna press the home button. Uh, home. Okay, so it has been homed. I'm going to push down the plate with my fingers. I'm going to tighten this up. Hi, Nick. I will definitely remove that plastic. As I was just mentioning, I saw it on there. So I'm hoping the directions tell me to actually remove it. Thank you, Dan. Dan is being my cheerleader in the chat, so I appreciate that. If you could like the video for me, it'd be terrific. I'm going to make this pretty good and tight. I want to make sure that there are no problems with that. Okay. All right, do, do, do. I was just thinking something and I lost track of what I was thinking. All right, so lastly, click. Let's see, more clicking. All right, we're gonna click Z0 to confirm. We're gonna say setting Z, yep, yeah, we're gonna say enter. Zero setup succeeded, raise platform now. Uh, sure, let's raise that. Again, the printer is really quiet, particularly with this noisy fan in the background here. Z0 
Dan has now been promoted to a moderator. Thanks, Dan. Thank you for all your due. So you are a moderator now. And with great power, as they say, but I trust you. Let's see, unless Dan doesn't want to be moderator and then he could reject it, I suppose. I reject the power. All right, so that is up now. Um, take out the paper. Done. All right, raise the platform now. Collect detection on the screen. Boy, a lot of walking around here. Thank you again, Dan. Appreciate it. Um, we're going to say detection. Please set the exposure time of the test image. Does it have any recommendations here? Um, screen select an image. Select detection on the screen. Select an image and the testing time and then click next on the screen. Uh, the curing screen should display a complete image. Okay. They don't even have a suggested. I'm going to say next. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Um, what do you do? Next. There we go. So, yes, I can tell by the glare that that's what I received. I'm going to... Is it doing it again? I don't think so. Let's do it again. That's just up and down there. But yeah, that looks good. I think you can see that there as well. Um, okay, so I'm happy with that. So now we need to install the VAT. Will the VAT fit under there? It looks like it will. So it does not tell me to remove the plastic. So that's unfortunate. But let's go ahead. I'm going to remove it. So I've got a little corner here. As you can see, a little piece of... I could have raised this up a little bit. But anyway. Anyway, that comes off cleanly. That was very satisfying. Very nice. Look, Dan, you got people vouching for you already. Apparently I, apparently I made a, a smart move by making you the next moderator. Usually Brian is my moderator, but Brian is obviously not here today. I'm going to slide this under here. Does it need cleaning? Looks good. It's not like perfect, but it looks clean. No problems with light transmittal. Okay, that does fit in there. As you can see, there are these holes right here where there are screws and these just seat into those holes. So that looks good. And my wife has joined the channel. <laughs> Sorry, that threw me off apparently. My wife has joined the stream. You can see uh, Mrs. Kersey there with the sunglasses. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Okay, that is installed as suggested. Now I have to behave. I'm always have. I'm always have. Uh, now it says we should print the test 3D model. I was going to slice something, but I guess I'll treat this like I would any other printer. Now it's funny here because it said uh, never told me to put in resin. <laughs> that would have been a nice thing for it to actually remind me of. Uh, but it didn't tell me to do that. So I guess we want to put in resin. Now I have, let me go back to the wide shot here. Yeah, um, so my wife joined us last time when I was doing my 10K stream and I think she was used to a much more um, lively chat, but that was like hundreds of people. Today we've got 64, that's not too bad. And 40 likes, Dan's doing an excellent job getting people to like the the stream, so that's terrific. It's a good ratio. Uh, let's go back to the wide shot. People love free stuff. All right, so I think I'm gonna try this. I've never actually printed with it, but I've got this uh, Ziltec 
rapid curing resin. Let's see, it's not going to focus very well. I have autofocus turned off. But this is the Ziltec resin, uh, and this is a really good size. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a good shake up. And since I'm only pouring, well, let's see, I'll, I'll do safety first. Let's go ahead and get on the gloves. I don't think I'm going to actually get anything on me during the pour, but I'd rather not to have to go clean up in case I did. So as you can tell, I'm using reusable gloves here because I do not like to keep throwing away those small plastic ones, and these cover my arms a bit. So there we go. I like these gloves. These are really nice. They're thicker. Uh, maybe not as tactile as the, the smaller ones, but they're good gloves. So again, Ziltec, I will, um, I meant to put a link to this in the description, but they're selling them by the kilogram. Uh, so this is a lot of resin, so that's what I'm going to use on this printer. I'm going to open this up, and look, it's like an oil canister. <laughs> it's like what uh, motor oil or other uh, car um, fluids would come in. And notice they did cover up. There's usually a strip here that shows... Um, how much fluid is left and they covered that up so that you wouldn't get UV in there. So let me go ahead and pop this open. This should be transparent resin. That's not going to have a ton of um, ton of color to it. Now they did include a kit where I could add color but I don't really want to color the entire thing and I don't want to have to mix it up here so I'm going to go with clear. I'm going to go with transparent for now. Uh, yes, there is a fill line. So let me see, can I actually use the touchscreen in these gloves? Um, yes, I can. That's even better. Um, tools, can I raise it up? Let's move Z. I want to go up a little bit higher here. And then you should be able to see it with the camera. So, yep, you can see it in that little shot. I'll zoom in. As you can see, there is a max. It doesn't tell me exactly how much to include, but it does tell me how much to not overfill. So, and I've got all the filters and everything I need to save this for later. And I think Joel mentioned this yesterday. I love, love, love this. Their reservoir includes a pour spout here in the corner for pouring it back. Um, do I need a mask for this type of resin? Uh, I shouldn't in the garage here because it's a... Um, uh, it's a pretty open space, and if I, if I feel like it's smelling up too bad, I can open the garage door or open the window here, so I shouldn't need anything. How does it smell? I don't smell anything. So as, as of right now, I don't smell anything. It's not very strong. Um, yes, I do recommend a larger, more ventilated air. Anyway, what I was saying, yeah, and... Uh, Non-fam, uh, finish my sentence there. It does have a pour spout, which is terrific for, for saving the resin. So I'm not worried about pouring like too much of this right now. I'm actually worried that I can just get it in there. And so I'm going to keep raising the bed here a little bit. Apparently I need to... It has a weird little pause every time it reaches the level it thinks you want to be at. So that's... I wish it'd just keep going rather than sort of clicking its way up but anyway so now I can get in here and ooh I thought it was transparent should have been transparent I'm gonna pour most of it in here I'm just gonna pour up to the max line and the reason I say that is I'll probably after this stream go and print something cool on it anyway we have got this big build volume so I'm gonna pour a lot that's probably more than half the bottle to fill up to the max line. So we're good. Um, let's see. No, you don't turn the bottle around when you, well, I guess I could. But if anyone's ever poured bottles uh, of, of motor fluids, of car fluids, you usually pour them in this direction. So that doesn't look level. Is it level? It's pretty level. I leveled this bench myself. But you're right, that camera angle makes it look horribly um, unlevel. You know what? 
I'm as pedantic as you guys are, so give me a second. We'll figure it out, because I will level that vat, because that's not going to be a reason that I have a failed print. <laughs> See, the beauty of being in a garage is all the tools are nearby. Let's see, camera isn't level, that's what I thought. So what does that show? You guys called it, it is not level. So I am fine with being corrected because I want to make sure that we do a good job. So do, 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 do. I'm going to shim it, which luckily I just got this whole big package of shimming material. And we're going to use packing material to shim it and get it as level as possible. I'm not going to be crazy about it, but it's definitely not level. Um, but yeah, this was supposed to be transparent. I don't know what the color changes from. I've had this for a little bit. It shouldn't have expired by now. Uh, does it have an expiration date on it? I do not see an expiration date. Um, but maybe it prints clear. Maybe it just pours a little yellowish. So let's get it level. I'm going to move this to where I can see it. Well, that made it worse. Wrong side. Is it this side that needs to come up? Yes. How much does it need to come up? front needs to go up the problem is I'll tell you what the feet are not near the edges here the feet of this are actually fairly far underneath the base and honestly that I guess that'll make it more stable but when you're trying to level the darn thing it doesn't make it any easier I'm gonna break some of my packaging material yeah perfect 10 you're absolutely right the feet twist. Well, I have resin in it now, so I really don't want to go twisting feet at this point. Um, I'm going to level my table now. I'll tell you that. That's a lot better, right? You want to have a problems with that? Huh. Terribly unlevel. I don't want it to rock. You know what's going to happen here is I'm going to have to move it in it anyway because I've got other things to unbox. So let's move it to where I have an idea. Let's do it this way. Let's make it. Let's do that. How is that? So the table is definitely much more level uh, if I actually put it front to back. So there we go. So what's going on is that the back is not level with the front. That's the problem. Which is why it was all lopsided when I did it that way. I would, I would do it the right way, but this isn't going to be where it lives. You know, this isn't the final resting place for this printer. So I don't really want to do it here. But I'm really getting close to doing what you say. Anyway. Uh, it may print a little yellow or it may print clear. I'm not sure. Uh, so it is good side to side. Yeah, that's definitely good enough side to side. The back just needs to come up. Da -da 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 -da. Let's... There we go. And then I'm not moving this after it starts printing. Ha <laughs> ha, here goes the resin. Good. 
We good? Okay. We are level. Anyone have any arguments? Did, did that look good? Definitely left to right good. Front to back, it's good enough. I'm happy. Hopefully everybody else is happy. Did you see that coming? Well, should have said something. Uh, let me see. Does it wobble? Let's find out. Does it wobble? It does not wobble. The bench doesn't wobble. Nothing wobbles. Um... How spill resistant or damage resistant? Spill damage resistant. Um, meaning, if it spills, where is the resin going? Um, well, if it went around the back all the way to behind here, then it would be bad because there is a hole opening there, and then there's a hole right here, which is where the um, antenna goes. So. Um, uh, not the best, but not, not terrible. Okay. So, I think it's good. I'm happy with it. Good enough. I'm not going to put the lid on yet. Luckily, I did put my lid on my resin before it fell off the table. So, that's not a problem. Let's go down so you can see what I'm going to do here. It apparently does have a print on the USB stick, which is right there. So I'm, hey, the $169 Photon, I'm gonna be opening that in a minute after this gets started. So apparently on the USB stick, there is a test file, which looks like a lattice cube. So we're gonna start with that. Plug it here on the side, hopefully the right way. Whichever way you plug USB is the wrong way. I'm going to go back. We're going to go to back. We're going to say print. And yes, there is a test print right here. We're going to click that. And it is a lattice cube. And I think we're just going to click play. And there we go. And I hear fans that have cut on here in the back. There are two fans. Let me switch over to here. Uh, actually, I want to switch to here. All right. Let's move up. I want to make sure you get the money shot there. Beautiful. All the air is out. And I see the light leaking from all the various uh, fan holes and things like that. I'm going to go up a little bit here on this printer. And there we go. You can see down here on the screen the layer that it's working on. So that's the base of that cube. And it's looking really good. Let's catch up in the chat. No resin spill. No resin spill. Um, let's see. What are we doing? What are we doing? I'm, I'm behind in the chat now that we've started. So you guys can watch this starting to move up and down here. Um, uh, will it leak into the electronics? If it were to spill all the way around to the back, it would leak into the electronics, like way all the way back around. It would spill into the inside of the printer. I don't see anywhere that it would leak into uh, the electronics anywhere else. Even if it got into the hole here, which is where the antenna goes, it would still not leak into the electronics for as far as I can tell. Uh, everything else looks sealed with screws or, or whatever else. It would not leak easily. So... Um, Thank you, Perfect Ten, for uh, giving my wife credit. Let's see. Uh, set your resin printer, wham bam. Yep, I am going to. Well, if you'll notice, I do have a um, a silicone mat down here on almost the whole table, at least the part where I was going to be working with the actual prints. Um, I don't have that underneath this part of the table, but I need to get me a second one. I don't have one big enough for the table. Um, do 
Do you think the build volume is large enough to make a helmet in two pieces? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, because that would be, in the Y direction, it's only 120, which would mean that you'd have to have, I mean, two pieces would be 240 millimeters, which isn't wide enough for a helmet. Uh, no resin spill, as I said, perfect 10. Um, uh, ambient light, is it affected? Yes, it can be affected by ambient light, um, but not this quickly. It's not going to cure immediately. Um, let's see. Is it the cube maker's mube? It's similar to maker's mube's uh, cube, but there's been several uh, other ones built since his. So, um, let's see what I got. What I, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. Um, Phenom L to resin print and retirement helmet. Yeah, I'd love one of those. Maybe after this stream, maybe I'll get some love from from some of these larger printers. Um, how long will it take to print the test file? I don't know if it said on the instructions, or excuse me, on the screen, how long it is. Does it have a timer? Um, no, it only tells me how much time has elapsed. So I don't know what the layer times are set to or anything, so I can't tell you exactly how long that will take. I'm about to put the lid on here, so any of you that are concerned about the lid, uh, I will be putting it on in just a minute. Um, yeah, I'm wondering if they've sliced this really good for this printer. Um, David, thank you very much for this. What is it? This isn't a super chat. This is like a, what do they call these? Uh, anyway, thank you for the super chat. We're going to call it that nonetheless. Thank you, David, very much. Uh, and thank you for all the likes. And we've got over 100 people viewing now. So thank you, everyone who's joined. I think that means probably one of the other streams let out. <laughs> and now they're coming over to mine. Because I noticed I wasn't the only one streaming today. I, I meant for this to not overlap other larger YouTube channels. But uh, I'm glad people are finding their way over to this. I, I swear someone else's channel just got let out because it's getting busy. Um, yes, I am supposed to put the cover on while printing. It's a super sticker. Thank you, Dan. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and put this on so people won't freak out about the resin just spontaneously curing because I don't want to freak people out but it's not going to just cure here under the, I, I've got a couple of studio lights but it's not that bright it's not going to cure as if it was sunlight here so. the cover is on it fits well there's a little lip to keep it in place is it moving is the question let me see I'm getting told that the layer times are really off. Yes, it is moving. But as people are mentioning, the layer times are pretty long for these first layers. They shouldn't need to be this long uh, for the first layers. But this is the test file it came with. Um, you know, if people get tired of waiting and we want to end the stream, I will stop it where it's at and we'll take a look at what it's done. It's not like I need a, a test cube that takes too long to print. Oh, thank you so much. 55 euros. Thank you very much, Aldi. I would want to pronounce it as good as possible. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. Um, uh, let's see. How long between layers? Too long. Uh, again, this is the test file it came with. I didn't slice this one myself. Um, it is moving, though. It's really hard, I think, for you to see it moving, but I'm hearing it move. Um, I, I hope that after it's past the initial layers, maybe it is sliced better. Again, I didn't open up this file to see what the layer time was. Um, but I think we're done with this printer. It's going now. So what I would like to do is move on to the next one because I want to get them both printing. Whether we see results or not in today's stream, I'm not sure, but I do have... Uh, what I always do is I post this back to my YouTube community and I post it on all of my other social media for people to see the results if we don't get them done. Or if you just want me to stop it and take a look at what is done, I'm okay with that. I think it might be moving a little quicker now. I'm hearing it move. Um, measure the build plate precisely. Um, 
sounds like it's moving. I'm hearing it move more. Can I, I, I can't measure the build plate precisely anymore, at least not right now, because it is um, precisely covered in resin. So I can later, I'll be happy to later. I'll be happy to, to do that later. Um, let me know if you want a full review of this. Uh, I'll need to know that you guys enjoyed this enough that there is um, enough interest in it for a full review later because I have not taken the time to do a full resin printer review. I've got this one. I still have one or two from Creality as well. Uh, Adrian is saying, yes, do a full review. Um, okay. Dan says, yes, also. So let's go to the next printer. So while the Photon Mono X, oh, we got to switch out here. I guess you guys actually want to see what I'm doing. Let's go to the wide shot. We'll leave the close up here in the corner. Okay, so while the Photon Mono X represents the latest in 3D printing technology, or at least from any cubic, right? Um, I can take these off now. I didn't get a drop of resin on my hand, so any of you that are freaked out by resin, I didn't get any on me in that process. So I can touch these safely. I'm getting lots of full reviews, need dimensions in order to flexible build plate. Okay. Uh, I think Wham Bam is going to probably have one already specced out for this machine. So that's where I'm going to get mine from. Uh, tell Wham Bam I need one. Maybe he'll send me one. <laughs> so <laughs> go to Twitter, find Wham Bam's account, let him know that I need a flexible plate for both of these printers and that he should send me one over. Uh, and I'll include it in my review of both of them. That's just part of it. Um, Thanks, Scott. I appreciate you being here for so long. Thanks for, for dropping by. And uh, first unboxing one hour. Let's do the second unboxing. Um, okay, let's go. So if, again, where I would have, what I was saying, the, if this one represents the latest and greatest in printing technology from uh, any cubic, then this represents, I guess, some of their first efforts. And I'm really looking forward to opening this one because from what I've seen of this printer, it's a phenomenal printer. It is last generation. It does not have a mono screen. This is the original Photon. And as someone was mentioning in the comments, this is now $169 on their website. It is cheap for a small form factor printer. Uh, I think they're, I don't know if they have brought down the cost that much, if they're getting rid of stock. I have no way of knowing. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these were both purchased by me using uh, funds that I've made from the channel. So thank you, Patreon supporters. Thank you uh, to those that have used affiliate links. Um, and now we're going to take a look at what's in here. Uncle Jesse, man, I appreciate you dropping by. I know you know everything about these already. <laughs> I don't know. Have you gotten the AnyCubic Mono X? You review so many printers. I um, Excuse me for losing track of all of them. But it is going... And, it, and for those that were worried uh, earlier on, yeah, those first layers were really slow. This one, it seems to be moving a lot faster now. I'm not counting the layer time, but I'm actually hearing it going up and down um, reasonably. Sitting on his desk right now, so Uncle Jesse is also taking a look at this printer. So this is the original Photon. Again, I picked this up. They had a bundle deal where you could get this plus the Washington Cure Station for $2.99. And I believe it had free shipping, and that just seemed like a killer deal to me uh, at the time because I didn't have a wash and cure station, and I didn't have an any cubic for me to play with. So I'm like, you know, I'll pick these up. These are like benchmark printers, so I wanted to go ahead and get them. Uh, thank you for choosing any cubic. Please read the directions, precautions, uh, make sure the screen is taut, all that good stuff. I have very similar instructions to the last printer, although hopefully I can find the English versions. Yep, English versions of the instructions are here. Uh, yeah. So Uncle Jesse vouching for this original unit. Let's go ahead and see what we can get out here. We've got the package of goodies just like the first one. I'm going to keep that camera over there, so let me know if you want me to switch this around. It's your stream. If you would rather see what I'm unboxing closer, I'll move the close-up camera. Otherwise, I'm just going to show you what I'm pulling out. Uh, extra parts. Again, they're really good about including extra screws, which I absolutely love. I've got all the hex wrenches in here, gloves, uh, the face mask if you were in an enclosed area or if you were sensitive to resin. 
Um, uh, uh, Al D, uh, he asked about the printer in the background. Yes, this is my Ender 5 Plus. I am currently, this is my all modded up one with the Axo slides. I'm currently printing droid parts to build me a pit droid. And I'm doing really well on it. I've been printing consistently now for, I guess, over a week of pit droid parts just on that printer. Um, I'm currently printing the torso of the droid. And uh, I have my first torso piece that did have a layer shift. So what I did, I had to increase, increase some voltages because of a layer shift. It's one of the only layer shifts I've ever gotten on this printer. Uh, but I increased some voltages. I don't think it's going to do it again. It's looking really good. But that's a side note. Um, uh, yes, uh, it is the Micro Swiss hot end. I love the Micro Swiss hot end on that printer. Um, okay, so NonFam's been counting. And NonFam says that the layer time is correct. Two to three second layer time. So that's good. Uh, watch out for the USB stick when they unpack the next printer. It's sticking out. Okay. Um, Creality for 14 pounds, and they're undercutting Wham Bam for 80%. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I don't know much about Creality. I haven't seen their new um, build plate. I've not seen that. So I like this USB stick. Nice aluminum USB stick there. We've got a US power cord. Thank goodness. we got AC adapter. What else we got? Wow. Teeny tiny hex screwdriver. But it is a nice looking screwdriver. It's just small. And the usual little Q quality control card. Uh, they are after service card, just like in the last printer. So it's very similar. Uh, that's it for the top here. Now I've just got air here holding everything in. There we go. All right. I have quite the... I can't get out of the garage anymore. I've got packaging everywhere. And I'm going to put this down. Let's do this right. Let's see. What percentage of IPA for washing resin in the wash and cure? Uh, what do I currently have right now? I'm a big fan of like the 98% stuff usually. I don't know what the Wash and Cure recommends. Jesse's in the chat. Maybe can, Jesse can respond. I usually buy the really pure stuff when I'm using cleaning. Um, but the stuff I have right now, which is what I could find at the time, is like 91% IPA, um, which should be more than enough. Let's see. Thank you, Dan, for keeping up there. Uh, Henry says he buys the 99% and then reduces it down. I'm going to pull this out by the bag. Hopefully that's an okay way to do this. As long as the bag is sturdy. There we go. Again, I'm showing this off because I just got it not too long ago and because the prices are still killer. So why not take a look at these old printers? and um, that are still being sold for terrific prices and see if they're still worth owning. Let you know what you can buy out there today. That's pretty. You see all that metal on this printer? Boy, that's nice. That is really, really nice. The build quality just feels fantastic. And it's heavy. This thing probably weighs as much as that one does. <laughs> I'm going to have to call out Mrs. Kersey to come out here and help me get this out. There we go. All right. It has handles. So look at that. This is a portable resin printer. Very, very nice. So on the side here, we have our handle, like I was saying. We've got our USB port, on-off switch. On the back, we have our barrel jack. We have a removable panel here. I'm sure that's for service. On the other side, we've got another handle. Um, let's see. 
Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, created a part to adapt uh, the MicroSwiss to the ExoSlide. It's compatible with Direct Drive. No, it's still not compatible. Uh, what I am trying to do with the MicroSwiss uh, Direct Drive and the ExoSlide, I'm trying to get the two companies together so that they can work that out. I would love one specifically with drill holes, with, with mounting holes specifically for it, rather than doing an adapter. So I'm hoping to get MicroSwiss with ExoSlide working together and produce one specifically for that setup. Um, no, this one's not the mono. As I mentioned, this is back uh, square one. This is, this is the original Photon. They're still selling it. It's $169, terrific price. Um, resin removes with 91%. So I bought the right level of, of, uh, of IPA because I've got the 91% over here. Let's see, how does this open up? So I can tell there's a knob here that's not installed. In fact, let's do the directions tell me to install the knob. So yeah, first thing first, install the door handle in the top cover, then plug in the power and turn on the power switch. All right, so the knob is in this bag. I can tell you that is printing fast. I can already hear it just how much faster it's going than the other resin printers I've been testing. Uh, you can really hear it going. So it comes with a little knob for the door. Extra screws, like I said before. Uh, I guess one of these screws that's in the bag is for the door. I'll save some of this back in here because I'm not going to need it. I'm going to use my own gloves. But I like having extras. So it's appreciated, particularly from people that may not have these and they get a printer and can't use it yet. Uh, just in 3D, thanks for joining us, by the way. Power plugs. What screw goes with this here? They don't actually say it's an M48. Yep, lots of choices. Let's see, can I get this to open? Yep, I can, so this is how this one opens up. It's a nice door. All right. And it is full of foam. Get rid of the foam. And inside, it is kind of tight in here. Let's go and pull out the plate. So here is the build plate on this one. It does have a nice plastic coating on it, which I can go ahead and remove. Not too worried about it. You can tell when you get it off because it goes from blue to unfinished. Oh, there goes that. Wonderful removal. How many people we got in the stream? I've got too much up here on the screen, so I can't really answer those questions myself. So that looks good. Actually got a little bit of... That needs to be cleaned a little bit, so I'm going to have to go get a... Uh, cloth, just because there's a little bit of sticky left on there. And this should come out of here. But it's not cooperating. I don't want to damage anything. How do they expect you to take this out? Hmm. Boy, they packed that in there and the sides don't come off. What am I missing? What am I missing? Who has taken this out before? It doesn't come with unpacking instructions. There we go. I just had to get these two feet out of here. That's what was holding it on. There we go. Let's see. Okay. Got it. Don't touch the screen. That sounds great, JC. Sounds like an excellent, so I, I, I'm not going to be able to read you all of these chats, unfortunately, if you're watching this after the stream, but please turn on the, the chat if you want to know what's going on. JC is going to be showcasing to the blind or physically impaired people. I think that's a terrific thing in introducing resin. Um, oh, more than happy to keep doing this. Thank you so much. Um, 
what do we have here? What do we have here? Let's see, we need the right kind of screw to attach that on here. There is an M4. That's not it. Is it? No, that's not it. I assume it's in here. That's an M3. Where's the screw that supposedly comes with it? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Apparently Amazon's got uh, that for sale now. Let's see. Well, you know what? There is a thumb screw. That appears to fit. So we're going to just use that. I don't have any other use for these screws. So I'm going to put a thumb screw in here and just tighten down my handle. And then I don't even need a tool to tighten it down. No, the screw was not already in the knob. It was just in the pack of screws. And it's an M4. And the only thing M4 in this pack of screws were the two little thumb screws. So I'm just using one of those. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm doing this quickly, I'm doing it on the live stream. There could be another screw in one of these packages that I just didn't see when going through it quickly. Uh, uh, it's drink break, so my throat is getting really dry. Give me a minute. Yes, I am um, quite aware of Uncle Jesse's videos on dentured alcohol that was for uncle jesse it's denatured alcohol yeah and i've been meaning to buy some at uh the home depot here so i'm going to go there later and get one thank you this is my georgia renaissance festival mug it's one of my favorites so i guess the next thing we need to do is actually make it where we can see this print going So I'm going to try to get this off of here so that we can see at least from the front panel and I can get the other panels later. I don't want to spend a lot of time removing plastic coverings. But you can't see the print if you don't have at least the front window open. Don't make this easy though. They could have done this, since it's an inside cover, they could have done this before it left. There we go. So... I can get a good clean tear if I stay close to the edges. Oh, yeah. Look at there. It actually came off really clean. The only thing icky is I got some stringy on the outside. So there we go. I'm not going to take the inside ones off right now. Okay, what's next on this one? So the build platform can be twisted after loosening the screw. So this one has a screw on the inside. So in here, and there is a screw down inside of it in case I need to twist it. Why would I need to twist it? Oh, because this one's on a ball joint, that's why. Okay, so you need to loosen this up so that the ball joint is loose. And now it pivots and adjust the way it's supposed to okay so the platform onto the bracket let's go and remove our and loosen these up a little bit so here's the reservoir on this printer uh, and there is a pour spout on this one as well right down in this corner so good on them and all these metal man feel so good they make some high quality stuff very nice build quality um, this will go on here without raising the bed, actually, because they left enough space, and so I'm just going to tighten that down. Let me turn this into you a little bit. I'm going to tighten that down. Um, so they say to put a piece of A4 paper. I have that leveling paper from before still back here somewhere. I'm going to do that one. So that's good. Excuse me. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this printer in as well. And we will get it back here. Get 
Again, this printer still going well, still going quickly. Yeah, that one's going really well. This one's obviously going to be a little bit slower. I don't know what the test print is that comes with this printer. I don't know if it's the same one. What we got going on? How many people are joining us? 101. 63 likes. As Dan would say, smash that like button. We got a lot of people watching. I'm plugging in the printer. Now's an ideal time to go and press the like button. Let YouTube know that they should be sending more people over to this stream. All right, so there we go on this one. And can I get both printers in there? Something going on with the stream? Let me see. Am I seeing any problems? Is YouTube telling me? I got excellent condition here. Stream is healthy. Uh, stream program. Yep, I've got all green lights here, so everything looks good here. Sorry, Dan, if you're having some issues. Let's see what's going on here. I want to try to move this back so I can get both printers in here. Wrong way. There are both printers. Uh, a bit more glare than you'd probably want. There we go. So you're not going to see the UI on this one quite as well because I'm, well, you know what, while that's printing, it's just doing the same thing over and over again. I guess I can come over and try to get the UI on this one. Okay. So let's go and cut this one on. It is plugged in now. There we go. You got a beep. And what are the policies here? So... We're going to go down to that screen again and do the home. Is the homing pretty much the same? It is. We're going to need this. Uh, we're going to set our Z to zero. Um, okay. Just take it with me. Let's go ahead and zoom in. We're going to switch over to the large close up. There we go. Now you can see what's going on. JC is in Miami. Um, layer thickness, how much millimeters per minute? I do not know. This is the uh, file that it came with. So I, unfortunately, I can't tell you all the specs. I didn't open it before we started printing. So we can look at that later if we have time. I don't know if we'll have time. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to need to go up a little bit so you can see what's going on here. I'm going to spend all afternoon just adjusting. Okay, so we're going to go to Tools, and we're going to go to Move Z. All right, all right. We'll go to Z0. Move Z. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's get my paper. Any of these pieces of paper. Where'd the paper go? I just had the paper. There it is. So this should slide underneath here. We'll go to home. Okay. So that is home. I'm going to not only with this one having a ball mount on it, I not only need to make sure that it's flat, I also need to make sure it's straight. And it is straight. And I'm going to go back down in here. I'm going to tighten that down. I'm going to actually switch over to the uh, one that will give me more leverage. And now I can tighten that down to where it doesn't move anymore. All right, so I'm going to go here and then go back and hit Z0. I'm going to say enter and it is set. All right, I'm going to go to move Z, 10, raise this up a couple of times. There should be a screen protector on here, I think, but I should be able to see it if there is. That's how this one doesn't stop every time. If I press the button over and over again, uh, it doesn't have those uh, catches every time, which is good. 
Um, where do we go? Okay, there we go. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So anyway, this is this was straight. You saw it. Uh, there is no protective screen on here, so we don't need one. I'm sorry, we don't need to remove it. I'm going to remove, I just blew on that a little bit to get off any extra. That looks clean. Good screen. Plenty of light transmission. I'm going to go through the bottom here. And then, I have to admit, this is a little tight in here. But it's not too bad. Okay, so that's good and tight in there. One thing I did say earlier is that I wanted to get me a lint-free uh, a lint free cloth and clean this off a little bit because there was a little residue from the sticker that was on there. Okay, I'm not feeling any residue now. So, always good, particularly with resin printers, to have some of these lint-free cloths around because they will really come in handy. And I didn't adjust it because I really tightened that thing down. So it's still good. Okay. We got. And let's go and check level. People want to see level. I don't have a super tiny level. So I'm just going to check it on the top of the machine. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to check level on the top of the machine. That is within the level lines. It's not 100% perfect, but it is within the level lines of the level itself. Front to back. Um, it's a little back forward. Excuse me, it's a little back up. So if it has leveling feet, feet on this one, then I'll raise those up a little bit. I'm being told that the build plate is crooked. Well, I don't know how that's really possible. And I'm also not for arguing with you. Let's see if that fixes that. Almost. I like the feet on here. That's a really nice feature. Thanks, guys, for letting me know that it did that. Not too much. Okay, still too high. That's within level. That's within level. That's even more level. So we're good there. If I'm being told that it's still not straight. I'm going to actually level it like this because I actually think that this is a better method of leveling the bed. So if you guys don't think it's level, we are going to do it again. One more time. I'm going to loosen this up. There it goes. I'm going to make sure that it is at least straight so it goes in there and I'm going to hit home. Okay, so I was told it wasn't level before. I am leveling it again. Okay, everybody's seen it now. <laughs> it's level. Um, I think it's straight now. It was crooked when you first put it on. Um, blue windows. Okay. So are we good now? Let me raise this up high enough. Oh, I forgot to shoot. Forgot to hit the Z0. Let's go back down. Since I didn't hit Z0, I guess I need to start over. Let me make sure I do it right. Okay, home again, because I forgot the Z0 part. Okay, 
one more time. tight. Put it back up. Say Z0. Say yes. Okay. Now I'm going to move Z up to where we can pour some resin in here. Now, whether you want to level with the vat in or vat out, I actually prefer prefer leveling with the vat in and, and yes it's like it's not really harder to do it that way and you're actually leveling against the surface you're actually going to be printing on so i prefer leveling this way um is there a max level indicator in this one i don't see one i do not see a max level indicator of any sort in this vat there is one on the new one but i don't see one here okay um, let me go up one more time. Okay, so here I have some Sane Smart Rapid UV Printer Resin. And I'm going to try this one on this one. Any disagreements before I pour it in? Sane Smart, and this is some of the gray. Shaking it up. I'm going to go put on my gloves so I don't get fussed at. Safety first. We got going on 99. So Dan wants to know, is there anyone that hasn't, hasn't smashed the like button? Because uh, I'm sure you could do that real quick. Going into mad scientist mode here. Big long black gloves. All right, again, Sane Smart Rapid UV Printer Resin. I am shaking it up really good before I put it in here. And I'm just gonna probably pour what's left in here. I don't know if I'll need more than that. Uh -huh. This is one of the ones that come with the extra special pain in the butt sealer on here, but it does seal it up nicer. I know you're supposed to use the little thumb thing. I don't like doing that. So. All right. See, because of that, I get a little bit on my gloves, which I don't like. There we go. So there is the gray. Now, does anyone think that that will not be enough resin? It's all the way up to the line where it... Um, you know, chamfers over. Does anyone think that that will not be enough resin for the test print? I think that that will be more than enough. But I'm going to let the audience decide whether I need to add any more. What are your thoughts? Is this one smelly? Yes, this one is smelly. Um, I do have to say the rapid UV printer resin from Saint Smart. I don't like the smell of this one. This one is the um, the one from Ziltec is much better. If you're if you're worried about smell, um, this one's not as good as the Ziltec. I'm still not getting any odors from this printer over here. I'm not smelling anything, and whether it's the cover or whether it's just that the Ziltec is a good non-smelly resin, I'm not smelling anything off of this one. Okay, everyone says good. Good to go. All right. So we're gonna go there. Now I have to remove my gloves a bit because I did get a little on the tip, my fingertips. So I'm gonna to have to clean those off in a few minutes, but that's not, that's not a pain. So safely remove the gloves. I'm gonna throw those back here. Okay, let's go ahead and say back. Uh, we forgot to do the light test. So I did forget the light test. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, there's this detection thing, and I can't see it through. Um, can I see it through? Let's find out. Um, well, I can't see it through there. Can I see it on the back? 
I hope I have light, but now there's resin in it, so I probably didn't want to do that anyway. Someone's going to fuss at me now. I didn't want to do that. Okay, it's all right. I don't care. It's one layer. All right, so let's, uh, let's put in the USB stick. USB stick right on the side here. Let's say print. I did forget the light test. That kind of bums me out. This one doesn't have a test file on it. Really? Oh, there it goes. It just hadn't loaded yet. All right. So this one's file, what does it look like? This one is a whole build plate full of stuff. Wow. I don't know what it is. R-E-R-F. Any, anyone knows what R-E-R-F is? But it's a whole build plate of prints. All right, we're still going to go for it. Okay. Let's say play. And the fans cut on. And it's funny, the, I think the fans are louder on this one than they are this one. This one is a higher pitched fan. Uh, the new Mono X is not nearly as high pitched. This one is a, the Mono X is a duller sound. So, and everyone has stopped chatting, which makes me worry. And everyone stops chatting. I don't know if anyone is still there. Someone can chime in. Okay, I'm good. All right. No one complained about the stuff I was complaining about. That's odd. All right. So I am going to go and peel off the top one here while we're waiting for this to get going. And then I will close it so no one complains that my resin's going to cure on me just sitting here. Told me not to worry. Have you been on YouTube before? Yeah, I'm actually hearing the layers go down faster on this printer, too. It's kind of odd. I really wanted to make sure it's stuck on the other one. So, that one's going. Is there any way to see that the light is cutting on since I forgot to test it first? Okay, so I'm looking in the back of the printer. I am seeing UV light, so I assume that the UV lights are working in that printer. Let me close this up. And it is magnetized. That's a pretty good um, pretty good magnet there. I don't think I... There we go. All right. I'm going to get both of these in the shot. Since you have been missing out on the mono. So now they're both going. That's a good question, JC. I wish I knew how long either one of these prints was going to take, but I really don't know. The best I can do, I was told three second layer times over here, uh, and we can do math. I'm more than happy to do math on it. Let's see. So, so if I do the math on it, we have 1481 layers total. We have done 257. That leaves us with 1224. And 1224 times 3 seconds is 3, uh, 3,672 seconds. Divide that by 60, and it's going to take about an hour. So we got about an hour on this print. I have no idea how long this one will be because it depends on what the layer times are but about an hour left on the Mono X. Let's see. Chat lag is bad. See, I even put it on ultra low latency. 
no idea why I'd be getting chat lag other than just YouTube. So let's keep all these pieces together. I won't need my level at the moment. Clean up, and while this is going, I can pull out that wash and cure station and we can take a look at it for people that are interested. I know, I think the wash and cure has been done to death here on YouTube, so I didn't want to do a dedicated review of it. It seemed like uh, it had been done. But I do want to clean up. I like to keep things together. Do you have any Prusa printers? No, Prusa has never sent me any, and I have never been inclined to buy one for myself. Uh, and honestly, I've never had any of my viewers or Patreon supporters really request it. So, um, if there was enough demand for me to check one out, I would. Uh, I'm not opposed to Prusa printers, but I've just never had a real desire for one either. And pull these off. Just put this here. No, well, I don't know. I'm gonna put it back over this way. Um, I'm sure they're awesome. I know a lot of people are happy with their Prusas. Um, move the inset to the opposite corner so we can see. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Let's see what I can do. That is the wrong one. There we go. How's that? We good? It's a good idea. So, non-fam doing the math for us. Um, seven to eight second total layer time on that one. So, let me do the math on it for us. We're going to assume his timing is accurate. So that one, we have a lot less layers. The layer height's either a lot um, higher here or we're just simply not uh, doing as tall of a print. So 288 minus eight, which is how many layers. And then we've got eight second layer time. And then we're gonna divide that by 60. So if my math's correct, we've only got like a 40 minute print here. Um, okay, so I think, I think that that one's gonna be about 40 minutes. So if the math is correct, the mono might finish before the, or excuse me, the regular photon may finish before the mono X. That's just because of print size. Um, what we got going on? Let's read the chat a bit more and then I'll pull out the wash and cure. Um, David is loving the Ender 5 Plus, which, hey, I've got one printing back here in the background. It prints nonstop. It is a workhorse. Um, and the one back here, well, see, no, I've got one over here that is still almost completely stock and it's just gorgeous. Um, JC Production is printing salad. I know that's not what he meant, but it's funny. Um, I'd be happier with the Ender 5 on Dominique. Uh, inset's the same size. Can it go up? Can what go up? Inset? Lift the inset to the top. Are you running OctoPrint on any of your printers? Yes, I run OctoPrint regularly on any of my printers that I make into regular production. So both my Ender 5s, or excuse me, my original Ender 5, my Ender 5 Plus that's back here, they both have OctoPrint on them. Um, once that uh, Ender 5 Plus gets into regular production of parts or you know projects, then it will move into one also. You can cover up the Ender 5 Plus there, move it up there, you like that? Okay, let's open that wash and cure now. And then we'll be ready to actually handle these prints when they're done. Well, this one, 
This is not a light piece of equipment either. Wow. Okay, someone's gonna get killed. Tower of boxes and packing equipment. I'm going to block the light, I'm going to block the sun with all of this. I need to be able to get out. There we go. Something's going to fall. I know it will. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's check out the washing cure. What time is it? It is just a little after five. So we don't have too much longer. If I have to take off, I don't mind leaving the stream running and then coming back when we have the prints done. Uh, but, okay, I've got the wash and cure manual. There we go. More packing material. I have uh, US power. Hey David, good to see you drop in. Glad you could make it. So this is the usual spare, spare parts that I'm learning that they are, love coming with. This one actually comes with uh, an extra bearing. It's got the hex keys as usual, as well as the little bit of documentation that we're used to in the other two packages. Let me get the top styrofoam out of the box. Good. And I'm going to lift this one up like I did the last one. Grab the bag. So again, nice packaging on here. They did a good job, again, with the uh, corner protection on these boxes and the high density foam. It's really, really nice. Um, that's just a lot of plastic and all of mine seem to have arrived here in just terrific condition. So what I got, um, Otterling asked, would you consider doing a quick video, a video on your thoughts on the functionality and possibilities with Octoprint? I do have an Octoprint video I would like to make, um, because a lot of people have asked me for it. So I do want to do one. It is on the list. And if I have my choice, it will be relatively soon. So keep watching the channel. Subscribe if you haven't. So I haven't done that yet on this stream. If you have not subscribed to my channel and you're watching this and you're enjoying the live content, if you think you'll enjoy my, my pre-recorded content, please subscribe. Please take a look at the rest of my channel. Um, I would really appreciate it. So let's get this out of here. So here's the lid. Again, nice molded lid with the same little sticker on the back. I'm sure that we're not supposed to remove so it knows when the cover is on. Let's set this over here. And we're gonna pull more packing material. Oh, wow. Sorry, too much chatting going on. Let's see, hey SPC3D, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Um, let's see, please let me know the main camera, the colors are brilliant on my phone. Oh, the main camera. The main camera is an M50, a Canon M50. It's the one everyone recommends for a lot of first time YouTubing. It's been terrific. You just need the right lens. Uh, so I've got a Sigma lens on here. I think it's the 16 millimeter Sigma lens that makes all the difference in the world with that camera. Um, so if you're, if you're going to get this camera and you're going to be filming this kind of studio setting, get the 16 millimeter Sigma to go with it. Um, by the, uh, by the way, Chris, since the second Ender five plus live stream, I got a, uh, Beanwell 600 PSU to do at 3d board and a BMG extruder all installed on my Ender five plus all working fine. That's a nice setup. It's a really nice setup, so uh, I'm glad you're happy with it because that, those are killer parts. Um, 
Yeah, I do like the Pi 4. Um, and I also, also like to get the higher memory on the Pi 4. I think it's the 4 meg at least, or the 8, or excuse me, 4 gig at least, or the 8 gig if you're going to be running any sort of user interface on it, so that you'll have plenty of memory. Um, thank you, Travis. That's awfully kind of you to say. Travis saying I've got good content. Thank you very much. Um, Perfect 10, video on the fine tuning of PETG. PETG is a real problem, and um, not all PETG is created equal. So I, I could do a short video on that. It would might come across as an advertisement for one of my favorite PETG companies, which is Greengate. Um, they sponsored a giveaway, but they've never sponsored me personally, so take that for what you will. Uh, Greengate makes excellent PETG, and it really makes it easier to print than some of the cheaper stuff out there. So let me just throw that out there for people interested in PETG. I do have an affiliate link, but there's not one in the chat or in the um, description at the moment. Um, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Otterling. So uh, more foam wedges. We have the, what do we got? I believe this is the, um, the plate that spins to do the curing. That's nice. We have the lid for our plastic enclosure here, which is where we're gonna keep our uh, IPA or whatever cleaning solution we choose to use. Uh, here is the clip that will hold our uh, build plate straight off of there, I think. Uh, the one off of here should fit, the one off of here is most definitely not going to fit. Uh, but that's the the hook to hold that in. We have the basket where we can put loose prints. And we take out the foam here. And here is the impeller that is driven by magnets underneath. This is waterproof, of course. But it's got a magnetic impeller underneath the bottom that does our agitation of our print and moves all, all around the uh, liquid so that we end up with a really good clean print there. All right, more packing, more packing. Uh, what do we got? Um, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Otterling. I appreciate that. Um, Yes, and Dominique is right. If you're just running it with a camera, but you're not running any sort of display or anything, all of mine that are currently running are still Raspberry Pi 3B pluses. I don't have even a four on a functional printer. I have a four that I bought uh, for a video that I plan to work on sooner or later. Um, I do like Overture. Overture was what I was using primarily before I started buying the Greengate. And Overture works. It, it has a little bit more stringing than I like, but it's functional, and I don't have any problems cleaning it up. Okay, so just like everything else I've had here from Anycubic, this is once again a beast of a machine. It's very well built. It is all metal. Uh, the plastic panel on the front is the only thing that appears to not be metal on here, and of course the rubber feet. Everything else looks absolutely terrific on here. It does have an optical sensor on the back, so it knows whether you have the uh, cover on. And this assembles pretty easily, really. So when you're cleaning, when you're doing the washing part of the washing cure, you will put this on here. And I can see it as soon as I put this on here, that snaps into place with those magnets. You can see that that impeller is snapping into place with those magnets. You'll either put your parts in here or you will put them on the clip. If you, want, if you have your whole build plate, you can just stick this right here, pop that in there, either way. That pops in there. You'll pour in your IPA or whatever else. You put your lid on. Oh, apparently you don't put the lid on while it's cleaning because that's not going to work. Then when you're done cleaning, all of this comes off. And then, you will put on your little bed here to do your rotating, and then you've got your UV lights all along the back here to actually do your curing. Very, very nice. 
Um, hopefully this goes in here. No, it does. There it goes. Okay. There we go. This is just an acrylic sheet, just like everything else. It has a piece of paper or plastic I need to pull off of it. Uh, let's see. Greengate has some mistakes on sale. Really like the clear. Uh, I really like the clear that has bubbles. <laughs> Prints well on my under five at two fifty eighty five. Um, when filling it, be careful you don't pour into your tanker. No doubt that would be bad. Yeah, and if you're not familiar with Greengate, um, they are using all recycled, uh, mostly from medical. Uh, PETG. So it's really high quality PETG. It was used for medical purposes to begin with. Then it is cleaned and recycled and turned into filament. So you are prevent by buying from Green Greengate, you are keeping uh, more waste from going to landfills. That was a good click sound back there from that printer. I hate that sound. It doesn't happen much, but it makes me look when it does that. Yes, uh, as Shelly mentions Greengate, we did meet them at Earth, and they were super nice and gave me some samples, and since then I have bought a few spools because they have really good stuff. Uh, they Back when they were at Earth last year, they weren't even selling materials yet. I think they had some on site that they were selling, but they were handing out a bunch of samples. Really nice, really nice folks. And yes, they were at Verf this year. So this is it. Not much to this one, and I can't really show it off yet because I don't have any finished prints yet. So how are those looking? Let's zoom in a bit and see if we can see. There we go. Lighting on there is a little harsh. Sorry about that. That is just the webcam on those. I'm eventually going to have a nicer camera for the close-ups, but... For now, the webcam does a pretty good job. Um, so Armando has a request. Uh, Armando wants to see my Stormbreaker up close. Let's get this out of here first. I don't want to do too much with too much on my table. So this is going to get plugged in here eventually. Do do do. All right, I'll say it out loud. I was letting Dan do all the work, but I'm going to say it out loud. Dan wants to see us get to 100 likes. So let's do it for Dan. 100 likes on the video. Two more. If you haven't liked the video, but you've been enjoying the content, this is your time. I want to sound like uh, an NPR campaign. You know you've been watching these streams, and you know that you want to help public radio reach their goals. So if you could just press that like button... That would be terrific. I think I can set that on there safely. I don't want to break anything. Boom and done, Shelly says. There we go. Thank you for helping Dan out. Dan is really happy now. <laughs> and I appreciate it too, of course. Thank you everybody for joining me. And thanks for getting those likes in. But I am trying to get this off the table temporarily. Because uh, I've got some requests to show some things off while we're waiting a little bit. And I'm not going to be running the wash and cure at the moment. Uh, but I did want to do the unboxing. I think it's a cool piece of equipment. At the price they're running, what was it, 119 right now for the wash and cure? I would have never built my own curing station if I could have gotten the wash and cure for 119 it was more hassle and almost the same price if I built it myself, and the Wash & Cure is a way better solution. So if you're considering buying something, um, then uh, please think about the Wash & Cure. It's a really nice setup. Here we go. Let me get a sip here. Let me save my voice. I don't think we're going to have... I'll tell you what, I smell fill, uh, resin now, and of course I'm right here next to it. I'm not saying that I'm like ingesting fumes like crazy. 
but I am smelling the resin now. And I really do think it's that Saints Mark because I was not smelling it over here first. So I think I'm smelling it here. This one's going pretty good. I am, uh, it looks like it's done 70 layers already out of the 288. So this is going pretty quick. And this one over here, we're probably about, yeah, we're 27% done. Uh, this one's definitely a shorter print. And over here, we are at 402 out of 1481. One thing I didn't do at the very beginning of the stream as I opened these up, because it would have been time consuming, is I didn't update the firmware on any of them. So one thing I will do after the stream, particularly before I were to do any sort of review of these printers, is I would actually uh, make sure that the firmware is up to date because I don't want to review any f fixed problems. So, anyway, Dave mentions, I've got my t-shirt. Uh, if you could 3D print that, you should own one of these t-shirts also. And I've got the link in the description. So if you're interested, this comes in a bunch of colors. It comes in a bunch of sizes. I am sorry for those that wear uh, extremely large shirts, uh, 3X or above, I don't have because I'm, I'm unfortunately limited by what Amazon provides because this is printed by Amazon. Um, so if you, uh, if you need one of those larger shirts, I do hopefully one day when I get big enough and can produce enough shirts for everyone to wear, I will make sure that we can get them in your size. But for now, if you wear, I think it's 2X or less, then you can go over to Amazon, pick this up in any number of colors or any number of other sizes. Um, yep, so I like this shirt. I like this red a lot. I also have the black one. Uh, it features an Ender 5, which is my first printer that I featured on this channel. I have thought about doing an Ender 3 or an Ender 5 Plus shirt, which has a different printer down here. If that would interest you, uh, let me know. Yes, I'm, I'm really a big fan of how Amazon did this. I was working with another company. I wasn't happy with the quality of the print, so I went with a different one, and Amazon's doing a good job. Um, uh, <laughs> All right, so I was asked, can we see the Stormbreaker? And I will grab, this is a, I don't know, what do you call it? I think it's one quarter scale uh, Stormbreaker. So this is a one quarter scale Stormbreaker, meaning I sized each thing, is it one quarter scale? One half scale? Maybe it's a half scale. It's a half scale Stormbreaker. Um, and what was really cool about this, this was a test that I did. I never meant this to be anything other than a test print. What's really cool about this is the handle is actually wood filament. So the top here is the glint silver. Yeah, I think this is the glint silver from Filament One. And if you are interested in Filament One, that affiliate link is in the description. Um, but this is the glint silver, which is beautiful. There's been no finishing to this head at all. No sanding, nothing, just gluing together. Uh, and then the handle, what I really wanted to do with the wood filament is find out, could you finish it in a way where you couldn't see the seams? Because um, I didn't want to have to paint it. I wanted to keep the natural wood look. Uh, and I don't, I'm not going to, if I get too close, it's not going to focus. So I'm just going to stay back here. And unfortunately, with this test, I was not able to get rid of the seams. I used wood filler. That didn't work. I used, um, I tried to use a 3D printing pen. That didn't do the job because it actually wouldn't stick to the original print. Um, but this is stained, uh, and it is glued together. And while it did not turn out the way I wanted it to, because if you get up close, you can definitely see the flaws on it, particularly up here around the head. I love it. It is a beautiful print. Uh, it was a fun project that actually did not take too much time. The only thing I had to do was really spend some time sanding the wood handle because I did want it really smooth. And so it, it's a nice print. My daughter really likes it because uh, it's her size. But there we go. Um, so the Oracle says if I get a t-shirt with an Ender 5 Plus on it, they'd pick one up. So I'll keep that in mind. A Jag says they'd like one with an Ender 5 Plus. Um, okay. Uh, wood filament. 
Yep, so this is printed with wood filament. I think this one was an Amazon wood filament. I'd have to look up the exact link of the one I used. Uh, but it did print well. Uh, and if I had a printer, like a giant, um, um, I don't know, just a really tall filament, then I could do the handle all in one, and that would be epic. Now, I still would have to seam these up near the handle somehow, or excuse me, near the head somehow, but it'd be really epic to print a full-size one of these. So it's fun. Very smooth. Wields well. Be a good two-handed weapon, one-handed weapon. And while we're, while we're showing off back stuff, I want to show off this one in the stream. So this is the latest thing to come off my Ender 5 Plus, besides these droid parts. This came off of a stock Ender 5 Plus. The only thing I did to this Ender 5 Plus was put in a silent board, which just makes it quieter. And I did a tuning. But this is what you can accomplish without any mods. So a lot of times people ask me, why do you have to do all those mods to a brand new printer? And the answer is you don't have to do all of those mods to a brand new printer. The Ender 5 Plus works terrific if you know how to use it, if you know how to tune it. Uh, this is beautiful. This is the Glint Purple from Filament 1. And as you can see, this is a single print. Uh, very fine details. You can see the top of that spire. The most impressive one to me is this one. It printed this tiny little space and then kept going and printed something larger on top of it. Did not break. There is no supports on this print whatsoever. Um, let's see. What about the one sitting in our dining room? I don't know. Which print are you talking about, honey? Which, which print in our dining room are you talking about? Um, let's see, yep, like the Mando season two, looking forward to that. Um, I'm going to have a video out on tuning the way that I tune a printer. Uh, it's pretty much like what you'll find in the Matt's Hub extruder calibration. Uh, but I do, a, I guess, a little bit differently. So I, I do want to put that out. No supports on this. So Henry asks what supports. No supports whatsoever. This is a three day print. Three, three and a half days. Um, yes, the SKR Pro. So I've got one more video coming out. My next video is on the Micro Swiss Direct Drive. After that is the Pro. So the SKR Pro has been asked uh, a ton. And um, so that's after the Micro Swiss. Another spike with the wings. Hmm. Yeah, just all of these. I mean, they're so impressive. I mean, look at look at this right here. You can see it this way. This beautiful little spikes running up and down here. You can't see it very well, but. Um, Uh-oh, David's calling Shelly to join us. It's funny. There's a big print sitting on our dining room table, and I don't know what she's talking about. So that's funny. Yes, so you want to know about this STL. This is a My Mini Factory STL, and it is available to purchase. It's five dollars. Um, let me see if I can find it for you real quick, and I will post a link. Let's see. There it is, Vampire Castle. And I will be happy to link to this to support the creator because they do amazing work. Oh, and they have a new one out this year that I keep waiting to uh, purchase and I haven't done it yet. There we go. That's the My Mini Factory link. Oh, the big printer. I thought you were talking about a print. Oh, yeah, I built a big printer. Will it be able to print a handle in one piece? I don't know. I'd have to measure. 
what's the diagonal of 600 by 400 and then yeah I don't know I'll have to look it up um, do I ever see myself getting a Glowforge or a laser engraver I actually have a small laser engraver that I have with the eCube maker um, and it I loved it on the EQ Maker. It's not the safest thing in the world because it doesn't come with any sort of enclosure, but it's really nice. Um, will I get something larger that can do a bunch of stuff? I would love to. I would love to have a larger laser engraver. Um, but what I actually see myself, if I have to purchase it, meaning that I can't get anyone to provide it to the channel, the next thing I will probably be getting is a CNC. I want to be able to make aluminum parts because um, I've had some requests for me to actually start selling some components, which I'm willing to do if I have the hardware to do it correctly. Um, so if I can get a mill that can do aluminum, then I might be buying that next. I would buy that before a laser, just because I, I have a lot more use. What other questions we got? Otherwise, I'm going to end up having to uh, temporarily leave the stream, let these print, and then come back at the end. Next cosplay video, that's a great question. Um, I've actually been... Boy, I just need to be able to make videos faster. That's the story of my channel. Uh, next cosplay, um, I actually plan on returning to the Iron Man helmet that I printed forever ago in pieces. Uh, I've had some people request that I actually show how I put it together and what I use and how I seem and... So I may come back to that one. I, I actually, that one wouldn't, wouldn't be too hard for me to do a video off because I have such a better setup than when I originally filmed that video, which made it much more difficult. I was filming it in my dining room. Uh, but now I've got all this, so I may show how to build that Iron Man helmet. That would be cool. Um, yep, let's talk outside chat. I might have... Devil uh, okay, JC, let me know. JC, send me an email. Uh, my email address is in the description as usual. I'll be happy to, to talk with you. Yes, I would love to clone myself, but the clones would be uncontrollable if they're anything like me. So they'd want to go do their own thing and be left alone, and uh, I'd get they'd get work done, but this version of Chris wouldn't. Um... about lasers isn't there a module you can add to a printer and use that to control motion control motion of the printer with a laser what are you talking about i think the idea of cloning myself just blew my wife's mind i don't know if she'd like that i mean then maybe she could have a dedicated chris for her and then like my kids could have dedicated Chris's. Maybe everybody would be okay with that. Yes, Crowley makes a laser module. I've got one sitting around here. They sent me one. Um, is there interest in the Crowley laser module? <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Celebrity. I'm a thousandaire. I have tens of thousands of subscribers. Well, not tens of thousands. Maybe one ten thousand. I'll go with what Shelly said. I, I've, I have a lot of demands on me. Um, Eleven point two. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Tony. I really appreciate that. Much appreciated. And now that's empty. But my throat feels better. I got going on. Oh, I have a feeling someone's been trying to get in touch with me. 
and now I'm going to get boring and I don't want to get boring. So what I might do here in a minute is take a break, leave the stream going on the printers, maybe even get you guys um, maybe even get you guys some background music. <laughs> Um, let me see how many layers we've got left here. Again, I've got, uh, we've got dinner and other things here at the house, but I don't mind coming back and looking at them once I give my family some time. So this one's got quite a, a while to go still. So we are two and a half hours into this one, and it is only 504 layers in out of 1,400. This one over here, we are 43% done, 288 layers total, 126 done, and we're 24 minutes in. So we're not, we're not being close to being done here. Um, so I have the choice of letting it run and people can come in and come out as they choose. Um, or I can stop the stream now and post the results to social media. I can even do it in video form if you'd prefer. So if we got some votes, let me know, but I am past my time. I told my kids two hours and we're past it. So what I need is let me know, do you want me to leave it running and come back, which all you guys may be gone or busy by then. Uh, or do you want to just check, you know, Facebook and my community page and Twitter uh, and see the results? You guys can give me your votes. Um, I, I asked my kids to join me on streams before, and if you know, if you've been around long enough, Jaina, my smallest one, has joined me before. Uh, but I give them the option. Uh, my older ones, I might get them on here. We'll see. But it's always up to them. Um, are you interested? <laughs> And I'm about to end the stream. Do you want to come in and say hi? So, um, hold on real quick. Let me see what i got going on here. Um, I'm hearing in the stream. Um, and then just show it on. So, w one thing. we um, I noticed Joel yesterday had a lot of, lot of positivity with, um, with Sydney joining him on the stream if you watch Joel's live streams. And I got to meet Joel in person last year with, um, I got to meet Joel last year when, when I met him at Earth. And I introduced him to my Sydney. I have a Sydney as well. Sydney's my oldest daughter. And um, she, I think, is going to join us for a few minutes. Come on. Although I'm gonna have to share my mic. Because I don't have two mics. So here's here's my daughter Sydney. So Joel has a Sydney. I have a Sydney. Um, so say hi, Sydney. Hi. So we we can scoot over a little bit so you're actually in the frame. Scoot over a little bit so you're actually in the frame. So uh, here we are. So we got uh, we got hello Sydney. Uh, Al Dill. How do you pronounce yours? I'm just going to call you Al. So Al is about to go to bed. And uh, Henry says hello. She's cute and shy. Yeah, that's her. So Perfect 10 called it. She's, uh, hello from Just In 3D. So you have to say hi. Hi. <laughs> Shelly says woot for you coming into the stream. So what do you think? You said you knew nothing about this this printing technology. No. No. Do you care anything about this printing technology? <laughs> I mean, it makes you happy, but besides that, I know nothing about it. So, so I mean, <laughs> she's she's happy because it makes me happy. Daddy's girl, no doubt. <laughs> Depends on when you ask. <laughs> so I think. Do you have any questions about these printers? They said, they said I should bring in my kids and have them ask questions. But you'd have to have questions. No. I would ask a lot of questions because I know nothing about it. 
Okay. Do you? Let me ask you a question. So you just came out here. Do you smell anything? Do you smell resin? Yeah. Like a plasticky smell? You do smell it? So I've been out here the whole time. Is it? Is it strong? Did you smell it when you first came out the door or just when you came over here? The only thing that smells your beer. You smell my beer. <laughs> There's no beer here. It's, it's apple juice. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> Uh, have your dad print some mini figs, so they think I need to print some D and D figures. Yeah. yeah. So she's she's into the D and D, so we're good there. Um, how do you feel that your dad's still in three D printing, especially because you are in school and choke and choking technology to your peers? I don't think you meant choking. Uh, what do you mean? I don't know what word that was. Any idea? Any other questions for Sydney? I see. I bet she wants to know if these printers will make enough money to buy her a car at 16. Yeah, yeah, I hope. You know, maybe a, maybe a Ferrari, you know. A That'd Ferrari. Be nice. That'd be nice. A Ferrari. <laughs> Millions of subscribers later, Ferraris for the kids. She's second in line for the car. That's right. I have a 15-year-old that still needs a car. But he hasn't gotten his um, permit yet, so it doesn't really matter at this point. I have a feeling you'll get your permit much closer to 15. Probably. As long as we're still not stuck at home. Well, that's a year from now. So more than a year from now, so I think I'd probably be old enough. Then. That's true. No, I don't design stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm not into the 3D printing type art. She is an artist, but she doesn't do the 3D design. My my younger daughter, she does some Tinkercad that she really enjoys. All right, that's about it, I guess. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna end the stream now that teach them manual. You know what? I would love to teach them to drive a manual. They're talking about a manual car. You know, where you have to actually have the stick and change gears and stuff. Yeah. But I don't have a manual car anymore. Here in the U.S., they've become, I mean, unless you buy a late model or unless you buy something custom, stick shifts are almost gone. Um, I do print things for them all the time. That's true. All right, Dan. Yep, I think we're going to end the stream. Everybody's had enough. So uh, thank you for joining me, Sydney. It's good to see you in the stream, and everyone wanted to see at least one of my kids, so it's nice that you joined me. Um, I am taking a business class, so I know a little bit about the business side of it. Yeah, so if you design something, then you could sell it on Etsy. That wouldn't be so bad. I could, yeah. Okay. Probably not in the 3D printing industry, though. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, you have to make him paint racks, making um, pegboard. Okay, bye. All right, bye, everybody. It was great. Thanks for joining me. I will post the finished results online um, so that you can see what these printers can do because I'm looking forward to it also. But I'd expect it this evening because both of these still have quite a number of hours left. Say bye, Sydney. Bye. Thank you for the nice comments. <laughs> Good talking to y'all and have a good evening.